it worked, is in a, for most of American history, it worked or it failed were definitive statements. Only in more recent times we said, well, it may be failing, but let me give you the really good explanation of it. In most of American history, it was, well, that didn't work. Let's go try something else, which is a pragmatic kind of approach. There are five enemies of entrepreneurial free enterprise. Bureaucracy, credentialing, taxation, litigation, and regulation. Let me walk you through them. First, bureaucracy. Bureaucracy teaches that process is more important than achievement, that rules are more important than productivity, and that bureaucrats should dominate productive people. I think, those, I think all three of those are absolute. I could validate a thousand times a day that those three things happen every day. Second, credentialing. You can apply this to your own experience in college. It emphasizes attendance over achievement, obedience over creativity, and it emphasizes an elite's definition of useful knowledge. And the elite, by the way, is largely a credentialed elite. It's not an aristocracy or an elite of achievement. Third, taxation. Shifts resources away from hard workers, achievers, and entrepreneurs into the control of bureaucrats. Taxation discourages the productive by taking from them the fruits of their effort. Taxation transfers wealth from the best market-oriented entrepreneurs into the control of government careerists who focus on inputs, not outcomes, and who measure processes, not successes. How committed are you to dealing with drug addiction? Is a question which means will you spend a lot more money? It does not mean if you find out that the most effective drug programs in America are very cheap, could we take all the expensive ones and replace them with cheap ones? Is that which, by the way, turns out to be true. Almost all excess, successful transformational programs are very inexpensive because they rely on a missionary spirit and a spirituality which are antithetical to government bureaucracies. And almost every one of them are cheaper than the parallel government service which fails. Yet, if you were to say, I have a terrific idea, I'm so committed to helping addicts, we should cut the program in half. People think you're crazy. Because that's not, that is not how the modern welfare state measures. It measures, it measures process, not result. Investment, not outcome. Regulations are a burden to entrepreneurs, a diversion of their time, often a process that requires learning the bureaucrat's meaning and the bureaucrat system, even when it objectively has no impact on reality. It is a daily reminder that the bureaucrat is more powerful than the entrepreneur in modern America. It's a very key statement. At the present time in modern America, a totally obscure bureaucrat who has achieved nothing and knows nothing has more power than a person who creates a million jobs. You decide which of the two can put the other out of business. Litigation is a direct threat to the entrepreneur. Operating on scarce resources to create a better future, the entrepreneur is constantly threatened by the specter of a lawyer whose lawsuit will at a minimum divert time and money and may literally bankrupt the endeavor. Just when the entrepreneur should be focused on achievement, he or she must focus on legal self-protection. Now those are the five killers of entrepreneurial behavior. And so what we're going to think about as we come back in the second hour is we're going to lay out looking at how do we create a more entrepreneurial society. Remember, entrepreneur means to undertake. It doesn't mean just to make money. But we want an entrepreneurial society so that people create local ballets. They create local sports teams. They create local charities, local hospitals. Entrepreneurship is the idea, I think I want to get something done. I will go undertake it. And what you want to have is a healthy, free society where there are 260 million people who get up in the morning and go, wow, this is a great day. It's, we're, we're free. We're Americans. I wonder what I'll undertake today. And then if we do that, our, our gamble is, and this has been our gamble for 300 years, that the explosion of energy that we arouse by allowing everyone to pursue happiness creates such enormous creativity that it drowns the more disciplined, efficient systems of centralized dictatorship. So we'll let, you, we'll let the other team have the bureaucracy. They'll be real smart for three weeks. We will then drown them in the sheer energy and creativity of free Americans who are liberated and who therefore rush around with enormous energy trying to pursue happiness. It's a very core cultural commitment of our civilization. So any I think uh, John said you have like a minute and a half. Any questions? Yes, sir. What kind of an advantage or disadvantage uh, environment would you say that having been a, a, uh, a historian and not an attorney in, a, in, a, in your 
political life, which is essentially a world of, of lawyers, has been? Well, I believe it's not being a historian. I believe whatever you want to do, study the history of those who did it. That's what Napoleon Hill did. If you ask me to what, to what, what advantage do I gain by any problem I face, I start by saying, tell me a story. And I listen to the history of the problem. I listen to the history of the people around it. Why did they fail to solve it? What are their views? So if you say to, if you are asking me, how valuable do I think it is to start by learning about reality by studying history? I think it is irreplaceable. I think it's one of the real keys to my success. It's different than being a historian. It's useful to have historians who write histories you can then read. But every American, I, mean, I think every successful entrepreneur who's smart, and you learn this over time, starts by studying the history of what they're trying to do. And I think in that sense it's invaluable. So when we come back, we're going to pick up the notion of what, will it, what would getting back to American entrepreneurial behavior, reestablishing the laws of success of Napoleon Hill, and looking at that, at how to be an effective entrepreneur, uh, a variation on Drucker's effective executive. And we'll gather in a couple minutes.